I've got another one of the outings out. I've been working on this one in the past. I think I did a video on it before. Uh, outing was a small off-brand company located about, no, no, not even 30 minutes from here, in Mount Kisco, New York. This machine probably dates about 1921, 22, around there. Outing was a furniture manufacturer originally under another name. And they decided to take advantage of all that good woodworking ability and the craze going on at the time for portable phonographs and the turn of the machine. Now, like most of the off-brands, this machine uses Heinemann parts, Otto Heinemann Company in New York, New York City. Uh, it's a Heinemann uh, motor of quality in there or something similar. Not unlike the last machine I did, uh, the Bradley or, or the Sorolla, uh, which with off-brand, well, not off-brand motors, with uh, third-party motors, I should say. Not Victor, Columbia, or Edison. Uh, tone arm, all that's all Heinemann on this. The unusual thing about this one is that it is oak. Most of the outings I come across, oh, all of them up till now, have been uh, mahogany, mahogany veneer. That was by far the most popular wood choice of the 1920s and the teens. Uh, dark red mahogany. This is like a medium tone oak. It is the original finish on this. And if you notice, another unusual feature this is not quarter sawn oak, unlike the Victors were, and most every other machine that offered in oak was quarter sawn. This is just your regular grain, almost like they took a, a, you know, a sheet of plywood and just peeled off an ear and polished it up. I think this is oak. Well, obviously, this is oak. Uh, this is a veneered machine. You almost just make out a little bit there. Most of it. All the side panels and stuff, those are all solid oak. This is a panel here you take down, and this is where the horn opening is, and where the tone arm store, stows, which is a typical Heinemann style tone arm. There's your horn in there. Let me see up in there. They had a provision for an album to go in the lid, and you see the outing name on there. Outing, Talking Machine Company, Mount Kisco, New York. Closest we come to a local machine around here. And we have a record ready to go on it, which is Oh Susie Behave. It's a melody one step by the Van Epps Trio, which is uh, contemporary with this machine, close to it anyway, in age. These just clip, whoops, right here. That's, that's your tone arm. You almost make out the outing talking machine name on the uh, reproducer diaphragm there. That is the original diaphragm, but as you can see, the gaskets have been replaced. You know, there's nothing exactly revolutionary about these. Except this one actually has an isolator in there. The isolator is just a, a double layer of that gasket. I don't know if you can actually see it in there. Just barely, maybe. <laughs> and this is one of those that you can rotate the reproducer sideways and play Edison records, Edison diamond discs, but why would you want to do that when you can just buy a diamond disc player? Okay, let's spin her up. Be careful doing this. A little stiff.
let's play the flip side. Like the Bradley, this has the larger two-spring version of the Heinemann motor. So it has a little extra power. Let's change the needle out. Always change the needles for each play of the record. Needles are not expensive. Records are irreplaceable. So when you wear them out because you didn't change the needle, you can't just go to the store and grab another. Unless it's an antique store and you get really lucky. So these are loud tone needles, by the way. Put another needle in there. Now we have Monte. Monte Cristo Jr. Oh, one of my favorite cigar brands. Monte Cristo Jr. by the same Van Epps Trio. It's a Melody Foxtrot. We'll find out what that means. Okay, I'm a little awkward doing this one-handed because this tone arm is not conveniently located in the front or where I can reach it easily. Don't want to drop it on the record. is actually in pretty good shape. Now, word about these machines. They're not that hard to find. Outing apparently did make quite a few of them. Usually there's one or two show up on eBay any given day, not oak. That's a rare one to find, but what is difficult to find a lot of times with these is that. That is a pot metal tone arm and pot metal tone arm support. This one's not all cracked and split. The joints aren't swollen. It still moves easily enough. However, I have found a number of them where this was completely unusable, just cracked, pieces missing, crumbled away to dust. 
totally unusable. So you want to make sure, if you ever decide to go for an outing machine, that the tone arm is in good condition because they're not easy to find. When, you know, if you had to source one somewhere else, you'd have to get really lucky to find the right one. There are similar tone arms out there, plenty of them. But this is made for this machine. It's sized for it, it's shaped for it. You know, Otto Heinemann would make you know, whatever you wanted basically for your machine. You sent them the specs and they turn it out. You can put your name on it if you want it. But uh, always got to be careful that you can find one with a decent reproducer and tone arm. If you have that, the rest of the machine, if it's got wood issues, you can fix that. The motor, you can get that anywhere. But that tone arm is difficult to come by because just like on this machine, any other one that has a similar one, they have similar difficulties. You know, and always handle them with care. Don't bang them around. You see, this one's not even chipped here where they usually do. It's starting a little bit there. I th No, that's just a little bit of corrosion. Thought it might have been bubbling, but it's not. Still in good shape. And that's not something you see every day with these machines. You see it? It's got freedom of movement there. A lot of times you'll find it will be frozen here. Because the, that is actually a screen of threads in there. And when that starts to split and swell, those threads lock right up. And then what do you do? You're playing with sandpaper and everything else. That never really works out well. But there you go. A look at the outing talking machine in oak. Now, I figured this one deserved another video because you can see the horn a little better in there. Where it goes up. That's where the, that's the opening for the torn arm support. I see. Let's see shiny. Oh, you see the pencil? That was actually in there. I left it in the machine. Antique pencil. Let me see if I can reach in there and grab it. Talking about things you find in, in photographs sometimes. This was in the motor compartment, actually. I don't want to leave it in there in case it jammed it to the motor. Antique pencil. See, the motor grease is still on it. dried up on there. So we'll leave it in there. It's part of the machine's history. I find buttons, business cards, loose change, and thousands and thousands of needles, needle packets, Needle tins, uh, uh, record dusters, they all turn up inside machines, not generally portables inside the motor compartment. And of course, in horn compartments, I have found things like uh, old handkerchiefs. And uh, there was a sack once stuffed in one to, to quiet it. That, that's pretty normal. The old term stuff a sock in it was coined by somebody stuffing a sock in a Victrola, uh, I'm sorry, in an outside horn, Victor, or a similar machine to quiet it because it didn't have sound control. This one, you can control the sound a little bit by just closing the door and just slamming that shut. But other than that, you're pretty much stuck with one volume controllable only by the needles. And a word about needles. I mentioned I use a loud tone needle. That's the big ones here. In the old days, they had four or five or six, probably a dozen different size needle combinations for different sounds and, and different melodies. They had special one for opera records. They had a special one for an extra loud, all kinds of stuff. Today, we have three different ones. We have loud, medium, and low. This is the loud tone medium, the high tone, the loud ones. For the maximum volume, you use these. These are best on the old Batwing Victors like I just played. You don't really want to use these on a later record, like from the late 30s, 40s, the Victor Electrics, because they get loud, and some of them very loud. Some of them so loud they'll overwhelm the tiny horns in a lot of portable machines. So for those, you go to the low tone needles, which are the tiny ones. These are small, much smaller. See the size difference? Let's see if we put them side by side. This way you can see the difference. The big one and the small one. These are thicker. These are thinner. Same length, just thicker and thinner. And these ones will, will mute the volume a little bit. They'll bring it down, especially if you've got something with a lot of horns and loud music in it, loud instruments, stuff like that. You use these, and it brings the tone down a bit. Or if you're using a, an electric record, electrically recorded record, uh, which tend to be higher fidelity and louder, you would want to use one of these many times. Uh, you gotta, you got to know the record. You have to know the record. And after you've played them a few times, you get to know which needles will, will perform best with that record. You know, every record's different. But for most of these older ones, the loud tones, and a machine like this with a fairly simple horn, you know, you uh, want to stick with the loud ones, which are these ones. And all of these are available on eBay. Oh, the third one. I, didn't ma I don't have the third one here with me. I used them up. Uh, that's the medium tone. It's kind of a compromise between the two of them. It's in the middle, you know, low, medium, high. So 
if if you want a way without sticking a sock in it to control the sound in a phonograph, you can do it. The ones that don't have sound doors, things like that, you can do it with the with the needles. And still nobody's figured out what these needle cups are yet, have you? And one person has, with a little help. Nice needle cups too. See? I actually have a whole set. One for the medium too. Where is it? It's up there, but and no one's figured out what these are. <laughs> I'll give you a hint. They're made by the AC company. That's a huge hint. All right. Uh, I think that about covers it for today. Went over the needles. Small, medium, motor. Oh, I was going to say, they're available on eBay. They're not expensive. A hundred pack is maybe three or four bucks for a hundred needles. And the more you buy, generally, the cheaper the price is. You know, there's one outfit that you can sell them by the 10,000 lot, you know. And there's more than one outfit that makes them. You know, you could uh, get different styles, spear points, and uh, the cylindrical ones like those. They all play good. You know, they're, they're all out there. And uh, another thing you probably should have if you don't have one is one of these. <laughs> if, you, if you don't have this or an even more expensive mechanical device, you're not setting the speed on your machine. That means your records aren't spinning at 78 RPM. And it's going to sound a little weird, and you may not even realize that if you don't know the music well. It's a stroboscope disc. Uh, you can get these on eBay. Prices vary. Most of the, uh, the phonograph part suppliers have them. It's made out of uh, basically the um, same material like file folders are made out of that kind of thing. You can make one out of plain paper. It doesn't make a difference. You, know, you can print one possibly even off the internet on your printer and cut it out and put it in there. This... Strobosoap disc is designed to work with an old-fashioned, yeah, that, that's not going to show, an old-fashioned incandescent light bulb that flashes at 60 cycles per second. Uh, you have to have the incandescent bulb. You cannot use a modern LED. You cannot use a fluorescent. You will get the wrong speed. It has to be an old-fashioned incandescent bulb. Which you can usually find on eBay imported from some third world country, I mean, or, or Europe, you know, where they're still here in the United States. Everything is uh, the newer style bulbs now. So if, if you're going to use a stroboscope disc, you have to get that incandescent bulb and you have to have a good supply of them, you know, in case it blows out on you. They did burn out from time to time. And all you do is you set this right on there. And I don't know if I can get it to do it. Probably not. It's not going to work on camera, but this will spin. And when it's turning at 78 RPM and you're looking right at it, unfocus your eye a little bit. And that will look just like that when it's spinning. All the lines will be even like it's not moving. Then you know the speed is exactly at 78. That's what this stroboscope disc is regulated for. And you set your speed like that. Uh, and if you're adjusting the motor, you adjust whatever you need to do so that your, your little pointer there is pointing at 78. This one's a little bit off. No, this one's actually on. I'm sorry. This is right there, 78. That's 80. Is um, Some old Columbias were 80. Why they chose to make this, this uh, speed control with 80 instead of 78, the most common speed, I don't know, but they did. But anyway, with a stroboscope disc, you can set your speed exactly. You know what your speed is. You should have one if you play records often. You know, it's something that you really do need, so... Put that on the list, too, along with the new needles and different assortments of needles if you're going to be playing a lot of records. And there you go. That covers it for this morning, the outing talking machine. And I guess they only had the one model. Yeah, they did. In 1921-22, they only had the one model. And eventually, they started making them a little bit different shaped with fabric covers on them. The, the fine finished woods were gone. They went the same way every other portable maker did with fabric covers, and eventually they ended up kind of looking like a PAL. You know, they had a fold-away horn, and, uh, you know, by 1925, I think, they were gone. They weren't around very long, or they went back to making furniture, most likely. You know, there was a lot of competition in, in the off-brands. All of them were trying to chisel away a little market share from Victor. Good luck with that. And this was really not a cheap machine. This wasn't because all the finished wood and everything like that. This was expensive, equally, you know, as expensive as, I'd say, a Victor Vichola 50 or close to it. You know, by the time you ended up uh, with everything. So wasn't one of the cheap brands, let's put it that way. 
And there you go. Victor, I'm sorry. Outing Talking Machine Company, Mount Kisco, New York. Model A, I guess, just like the Bradley. <laughs> Even though it doesn't say that anywhere. <laughs> 